Why, hello. You are reading Stargirl, chapter 30. And coming off the chapter of the winning of the oratorical contest, Stargirl Caraway, a.k.a. Susan, now, still want to go back to that old name, Stargirl, by the way, has arrived to three people welcoming her at Micah High. Really? Really, Hillary Kimball? Really? Like, come on. Give her some credit, you know. Um, well, maybe they don't like the new Susan. I don't know. Let's read chapter 30. As we idled, stunned and silent in front of Dory Dilson's sign, Susan's parents came and retrieved her from Mr. McShane's car. As in all things, they did not appear especially surprised or emotional over what was happening. Susan seemed in a trance. She sat beside me, staring vacantly at the sign through the windshield. <clears throat> Her hand was no longer holding mine. I groped for words but could not find them. When her parents came, she allowed herself to be led away. As she got out of the car, the silver plate slid from her lap and rang like a dying bell against the asphalt. Her father picked it up. I thought he would take it, but instead he leaned in back into the seat where, where I sat with a strange smile. He gave it to me. I did not see her for the rest of the weekend. By Monday, she was star girl again, floor length skirt, ribbons in her hair, just like that. She went from table to table at lunchtime, passing out happy face cookies. She even gave one to Hillary Kimball. Hillary took off her shoe and used it as a hammer to smash the cookie on her table. Star girl strolled among us, strumming her ukulele, asking for requests. Cinnamon perched on his shoulder. He was strapped onto a tiny toy ukulele. She made her voice squeaky and kept kept her finger, kept her lips from moving as if it was cinnamon serenading with her. Dory Dilson, bless her, stood and applauded. She was the only one. I was too stunned to join her, and too cowardly and angry. And not wanting to show approval for the return of Star Girl. Most of the students did not even look, did not even seem to listen. At the bell, as we left the lunchroom, I looked back. The tables, tables were littered with cookies. Walking with her after school that day, I said, I guess you're giving up, huh? She looked at me. Giving up? On what? On being popular. On being, how can I say it? She smiled. Normal? I shrugged. Yes, she said firmly. Yes? I'm answering your question. The answer is yes. I'm giving up on trying to be popular and normal. Her face and body language did not seem to match her words. She looked cheery, perky. So did Cinnamon, perched on her shoulder. Don't you think you could maybe back off a little, I said? Don't come on so strong? She smiled at me. She reached out and brushed the tip of my nose with her fingertip. Because we live in a world of them, right? You told me that once. We stared at each other. She kissed me on the cheek and walked away. She turned and said, I know you're not going to ask me to the Octilio Ball, but it's okay. She gave me her smile of infinite kindness and understanding. The smile I'd seen in her, seen in her aim at so many other needy souls, and in that moment... I hated her. That very night, as if she were playing a scripted role, scripted role, Kevin called me and said, So who are you talking? Take him to the Octillion Ball. I dodged. Who are you taking? Don't know, he said. I don't either. There was a pause on the other end of the line. Not Stargirl? Not necessarily, I said. Are you trying to tell me something? Well, what would I want to tell you? Well, I thought you were too. I thought there was no question. So why are you asking, I said, and hung up. In bed that night, I became more and more uncomfortable as the moonlight crept up my sheet. I did something I'd never done before. I pulled down the shade. In my dreams, the old man in the mall bench raised a wobbling head and croaked, How dare you forgive me? Next morning, there was a new item on the plywood roadrunner, a sheet of white paper. At the top, 
It said, sign up here to join new musical group, the Yuki Dukes. No experience necessary. There were two numbered columns for names, 40 in all. By the end of the, by the, end of the day, all 40 were filled in with names such as Minnie Mouse and Darth Vader and the Swamp Thing. The principal's name was there too, in Wayne Parr and Dory Dilson. Did you see? said Kevin. Somebody wrote in Parr's name. We were in the, we were in the studio control room. It was May and our hot seats were over for the year, but on some days we still gravitated to the studio after school. I saw, I said. He stepped up to a blank monitor, studied his reflection. I didn't see your name on the list. Nope. Don't you want to be a Yuki Duke? Guess not. We fiddled with the equipment for a while. Kevin walked on the stage. He flipped the switch. His mouth moved, but I couldn't hear. I held the soft pad of a headphone against my ear. His voice seemed to come from another world. She's dirty and goofy again, isn't she? Worse than ever. I stared at him through the glass. I put down the headphone and walked out. I understood what he was doing. He had decided that it was now okay to say bad things about Stargirl. Permission to do so must have come from my behavior. Apparently, the first to read me was Stargirl herself. I, felt this, I still felt the sting from her remark about the Octilio ball. Was I that nervous? Classrooms, hallways, courtyard, lunchroom. Everywhere I went, I heard of her disparaged, mocked, and slurred. Her attempt to become popular to be more like them had been a total failure. If anything, they detested her more now and they were more vocal about it around me. Or was I just listening better? She and Dory Dillson, the only Yuki Dukes, did a duet in the courtyard one day after school. Stargirl strummed the ukulele and they both sang Blue Hawaii. Clearly they had been practicing. They're very good. They're also very ignored. By the end of the song, there were only two left in the courtyard. The next day, they were there again. This time there were sombreros. They sing Mexican songs. Celito lindo, vaya con Dios, my darling. I, studied in, I stayed inside the school. I was afraid to walk past them if they weren't there. I was equally afraid to stand and listen. I peeked out from the window. Stargirl was doing her best imitation of a flamenco. The click of castanets came through the window pane. Students walked past, most of them not even glancing her way. I saw Wayne Parr and Hillary Kimball go past, Hillary laughing out loud, and Kevin, and the basketball guys, and I realized now that the shunning would never end, and I knew what I should do. I should go out there and stand in front of them and applaud. I should show Stargirl and the world that I wasn't like the rest of them, that I appreciated her when I celebrated her insistence on being herself. But I stayed inside. I waited until the last of the students had left the courtyard and Stargirl and Dory were performing for no one. To my surprise, they went on and on. It was too painful to watch. I left school by another door. So Stargirl, even though she's back to herself, she's still getting the, uh, the cold shoulder from the entire school. And Leo, like, he seems to be teetering. Like, he, he likes her. He even says, right here at the end of the chapter, that he is uh, appreciating her, you know? But at the same time, he's, he's not bold enough to do that. Like, how many people just want to smack Leo upside the face right now? Are there any Leo fans out there? What would you do if you were in Leo's shoes? Would you be... Uh, standing up for Stargirl, you know? Would you stand up for the girl that's being herself? Or would you be like the rest of the school, you know? I'm not sure if there's ever been a situation like this in, the, in school ever, but we're coming across it here, you know? The entire school ignoring one person. So uh, let's move on to Chapter 31 and find out exactly how, uh, how Leo is going to react to all this. So thank you for listening to Chapter 30. 31 coming your way. God bless.